everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing our how to build a Ford 5.4 liter three valve build series. We're focusing on putting on the timing set and camshafts for this video and I know that seems like an easier job in other engines it absolutely is, but on this one it's a little bit tricky so I wanted to dedicate a nice long video that's full of details so you can get these things just right on the first try because it's absolutely essential to make sure that this engine is timed correctly and there's basically only one way to do it and get it done and have everything looking perfect and don't worry, I hold your hand the entire time and go over everything. If you miss something, feel free to uh, comment it down below and I'll do my best to get to it and answer it because uh, this part can be a little confusing and fiddly and you need to get it right. Before we get into it, let's go ahead and thank our amazing sponsor, Summit Racing. Summit Racing has been sponsoring build series with us for three or four years now and have been an amazing sponsor. They have an, incre they have an incredible catalog full of the best racing parts you can possibly get, excellent returns and amazing customer service. So make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. So with this video, I wanted to kind of angle it towards somebody who's never done a timing set on an overhead cam engine before. You might've put something like a small block Chevy together where it's just one little chain and everything's really easy. You just match the dots up and you're good to go. But this isn't that, this is a little more involved. It's not too bad though, considering it's only single overhead cam. But I promise if you just follow along and follow the steps in sequence, you're gonna get it right and everything's gonna be a-okay. So with all that way, let's jump in. So let's talk about our camshafts. There is basically no way to get original Ford camshafts uh, on the internet as far as I could tell. Uh, I literally looked everywhere and couldn't find anything. I actually resorted to going to my local Ford dealer to get the original camshafts because the camshaft's really important that it is exactly perfect. They are a little on the pricey side. I think each one was like $370 and you need two of them and they're different driver to passenger and I've labeled them such as that. So these are not sponsored by Summit Racing. These are sponsored by me. These came out of my pocket. There is the part number for the driver and the passenger. Unfortunately, I can't leave a link down below in the description because again, I got these straight from my local Ford dealer, but they were easy enough to find and I got them the next day. It wasn't such a bad thing. Like I said, I've already labeled them driver and passenger. Now let's say you've lost your boxes or something and you can't really tell. The easiest way to tell which side goes where is if you take them out of the box and look at the snout. See the snout on the driver's side is a little bit longer than the passenger side. That's the easiest way to tell. So longer snout goes on the driver's side. So let's get started on installing these. So on each cam tower pedestal, I'm gonna call them, that's this bit here, we're gonna get some carburetor spray and spray it on a microfiber. And then we're just gonna wipe the top of the cam towers off. So those are nice and clean. And then do the same thing for the caps as well. And do that for every single cam tower. Then what I can do is just like a bearing because this doesn't have camshaft bearings. I know, crazy. It just kind of rides on this surface here. That's why you can kind of see there's a little bit of uh, pitting um, from its previous use. And that's okay. This has already been checked by the machine shop. Everything's fine. It's been align honed and everything. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Permatex Ultra Slick on the end of my finger and I'm just gonna kind of help it out, give it some starting lubrication, um, you know, give it its best chance of the cam not eating this surface because that'd be a major bummer. Just don't get it on the cam tower mating surface right here and you'll be good to go. So go ahead and do that for all of our cam towers. So now we can just kind of gently put in our freshly cleaned camshaft. I went ahead and cleaned it off of camera with just some carburetor spray and a microfiber. And we're just gonna let it sit right in there and uh, don't worry about it falling off. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty stuck in there, but if you're really worried about it, you can always tilt the engine until it is completely parallel with the ground, but I think this is gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead and talk about our cam towers. That's actually what holds the camshaft to the cylinder head. Now these stock bolts are torqued to yield. They're junk, throw them into the trash. What you need are a set of these bad boys and these were sent over by our friends at Summit Racing. They are not torqued to yield and we can keep reusing them. And I just think in general, they're gonna be a better unit for us. So we can take these out of the packaging and get to installing our caps. So I actually said bolts in the last shot. They are actually little teeny tiny studs with nuts. So what we can do is grab some ARP lubricant, apply it to the threads and then just put them in hand tight, 
just as tight as you can get it realistically with your fingers. You don't need to like grab a pair of channel locks or something. Just like that is perfectly fine. And go ahead and do that for this entire head. So with now all of our studs installed, just finger tight, we can go ahead and grab our cam tower caps. The first one's easy to identify because, well, it's the biggest one. And we're just gonna set that on there. And I've already cleaned and lubricated it. Might need to slide the cam forward just a little bit so it fits into the groove. Then you can just kind of press it down on there, no biggie. And then I have the number two cap. And I know this is really hard to see because it's just barely there, but I can see in person that it says number two and the arrow is pointing this way. So I know this cap goes on the number two position. And we can do the same thing for number three here. Nice, this is going together really nice. And number four, making sure our arrow is pointed to the front of the engine. Yeah, and number five. Awesome, now we can begin putting on our washers and nuts. Or if you have bolts, now is when you install those. Now we can install our fasteners on top of our cam towers. If you have the regular bolts, you know, go ahead and put them in and torque them down in sequence to your spec. And I would definitely put some lubricant underneath the head of the bolt. You can just use engine oil if you don't have this. However, we have studs and nuts, so it came with washers. So what you do is you just go ahead and lubricate the back side and front side of the washer. Now you've lubricated underneath the head of the nut without having to uh, fuss with it. And then also go ahead and hit the stud with lubricant. So that way when we're tightening the nut down, everything is nice and torqued correctly and we're not gonna get like a misreaded number. It's really important for this one because everything's so tiny. So go ahead and lube up all your washers and threads and then we can move on to putting our nuts on and torquing them down. So now what we can do is just bring them down to touch. We're not tightening anything just yet. I have my electric screwdriver clutched at number the two setting. Trust me, it's not tight at all, but I am gonna go in our sequence and that's what that looks like right there. There we go. Now we can grab our torque wrench and set it for 89 inch pounds. And that is the spec for our uh, ARP studs. I think it's the same for the bolts, but go ahead and double check that info. I'll leave a link down below in the description to all the torque settings for the stock stuff. But if you do, if you do use aftermarket fasteners, always go by their specification. And then you just go in sequence. Helps to turn your torque wrench on. There we go. And this is an eight millimeter 12 point, a little special. And you don't need to go like crazy equal steps or anything. It's not, it's not a lot of torque. And there you go, camshaft installed. At this junction, we can just spin our can shaft like this, make sure it doesn't like have any crazy like play, it doesn't go like tuk, 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 or it doesn't turn at all. Um, no, this is absolutely perfect. It needs to turn by hand just like this and make basically no sound. So that is right on. So let's go ahead and lubricate our thrust surface on our cam here. Now, if you haven't put your cam in yet, you can do it beforehand, but I kind of forgot, so I'm just gonna do it now. And it's okay to do it later. You wanna do the front and the rear just so the thrust surface has something to glide with. So here are my oil control solenoid uh, blocks, housings, whatever you wanna call these. I have reconditioned mine. Uh, there's a little screen in there. You can see it just in there. I took that out and cleaned it um, off camera and stuff. It's a little tricky and kind of an advanced uh, thing, uh, but if you feel comfortable doing it, I implore you to try. Um, however, they're not terribly expensive and I do recommend just getting a new. I'll try to leave a link down below in the description for you. But what we can do is just clean the mating surface of them and make sure they're very clean, just kind of in general. Because we want this to seal really well and we want everything to be nice and happy and not have any kind of, you know, metal bits or chunks. Then we can grab our gaskets that came in our Felpro gasket kit and they only go on one way so you can't actually get it wrong. Just flip it around a bunch of times until you kind of figure out where it wants to go. 
And these are kind of cool because they sit in their homes. They don't have like a uh, propensity to fall out. Nope, that's not right. That's not right. There we go. There we go. Now these are ready to go back on the engine. So we need to take our housings and make sure our gasket's sitting nice and down with our bolts that we removed earlier. And I'm just going to get them started. Since it's going into aluminum, it's like super easy to cross thread. So don't do it. I want to avoid that. There we go. And I'm just going to go as evenly as I like. Just by hands at first. And it might like, I don't know, kind of fight you a little bit on the way in. That's okay because it has those sleeves and that like aligns itself onto the head so it can't be mismatched. Um, that's okay, just push down on it, it'll be okay. And the torque spec is 89, so that's convenient. And I'm just gonna go as evenly as I can. I'm not gonna like torque it all the way down on one side and then the other. I'm just gonna go even until I get to my torque figure. And there you go. And just do the exact same thing for the other side. So now we can replace our oil control solenoids. It's the same both sides. They're not special. One can go on one, one can go on the other. It's no biggie. Uh, link down below in the description. And they just go in like this. Don't overthink it. And then we can take a T27 Torx. Just gonna bring that down to touch like that. So take your T27 and you know, I'm just gonna do wrist tight. There we go. It's perfectly fine. Don't overthink that because you don't want to snap it off and do the same thing for the other side. So here is all the components you need to put the timing assembly back on the engine. I'm not going to go over every single part. The two big parts you really got to worry about are these, the phasers. These are notorious for going out on these engines and making a bunch of clattery sounds. But the new updated ones from Ford are supposed to be the best. Do not get the aftermarket ones. These uh, from Ford Ford OEM are the ones you want. And I spent like $730 on all of this. This was not sponsored. This came out of my pocket. So, but the link is located down below in the description. I'm not gonna go over every single part in its entirety. I'm just gonna call them out as I go. And the very first part we're gonna need is the timing cog for the crankshaft. So on the cog for the crankshaft, you can see that's two-sided and there's kind of a recessed side and a dot side. Dot side out towards you, just wind it up with our woodruff key and slide it on. Now. The next important bit I have is that the Woodruff key is pointed straight up at a 12 o'clock position. That is essential for our timing. So if your Woodruff key isn't pointed straight up into the sky like this, go ahead and rotate your engine over until it is. So before we install our uh, phaser and timing chain, what I'm going to do is make sure our camshaft is clocked how we need it to be. It needs to be just like this. This notch has to point perfectly straight down. So you can also do it off the parallelness of these two bolt holes, but just make sure that the little notch, the little cut out there is pointed straight down and you'll be ready to go. Now, before we put our guides on or anything, we're gonna go ahead and install our cam phasers. Now, what's really cool about these is they're the same side to side, just look. On the top, see how it has like an L and an arrow? That means if it's on the left hand, point that up. For the other side, there's an R and an arrow. So if it's on the passenger side, point that up. That'll be our timing marks for later. But what we need to do is find the L. And you can also verify because there's a little pin on the back that's going to correspond with this chomp missing out of our cam. And what we can do is just set that in. It only goes on one way. And if you have that groove facing down, you know you're right. Then we can grab our banjo bolt that came with our kit and get that started. Now, these banjo bolts are actually torqued to yield, so if for whatever reason you tighten this down and you need to take it back off because something's not quite right or you know you have to go backwards a little bit, it's okay, just get a new banjo bolt because they are not reusable. Just make sure that's nice and flush, which it is. Now we can tighten it down and there is a torque sequence. Now you might be saying, look at this, you try to tighten it and the thing just turns. Well, that's no good. How are you gonna hold it? You can't hold it by the cam, you'll damage it. You have to use the teeth and there's a special tool for that. So I'm gonna get it for you. So check it out. There is a special tool just to tighten this down. And I know we don't usually try to use special tools on this channel. I try to keep things as accessible as possible, but the entire kit's only $30 and I got it on Amazon. You don't really need a super nice one of these. You're gonna use it once, maybe twice in your life. So 
just get the cheapo one. It'll be fine. I'll show you. So you can put this on the head surface like this and you might be like, oh no, it's not going on. It's okay. Just turn the cam a little bit because we just want to tighten that down and we can change how it's positioned later. I'm just going to install our tool. It's a seven millimeter uh, Allen bolt. Just make sure it's really snug and not going to go anywhere, which it's not. And just wrist tight on these. Isn't <laughs> You're just going to aluminum like that. Now, check it out. When I'm torquing down on this, this can't move. So we can actually get an accurate torque figure and make sure this isn't going to go anywhere. So now we can tighten this bolt to our first torque stop, which is going to be 30 foot pounds. There we go. And then I have a torque angling wrench, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. We're going to set it to 90 degrees. So we're going to pull it an additional 90 degrees. If you don't have that, you can just go ahead and like put a nice little white mark here and then, you know, check on it as it's going around and then it should just kind of point to the right. Um, but I have the tool, so I'm going to use it. There we go. Nice. Nice and installed. Now all I have to do is take this tool off. So now we can take our timing guide, and this one starts with part number 2L1E. I have my... I have my long bolt and it also goes through my oil pump because I kind of got that confused earlier. So I took one of the short bolts out of the oil pump and located it to the top left. I do make mistakes. I try to correct them as best I can. And then we can just start that one in the top right and just snug those eight millimeters down. Just to touch. Now the torque specs 89 inch pounds. Uh, I'm just going to feel it out. You can torque it if you want. Wrist tight is perfectly acceptable. Just like that, and now we can move on. So this guide kind of looks the same as the other sides. The way you can tell this is for the driver's side is this little bump right here. That little bump right there, that means it's the driver's side. The only reason I know that is because I went back and looked at the footage when I took it apart. So now we can see the front of our engine. Now I kind of thought that the Woodruff key would want to be pointed straight up and down. Wrong about that. Reading the instructions, as it always helps, we actually want the little dot that's on our sprocket to be pointing straight down. And that's why I have my bubble level here, so I can verify that the engine is perfectly parallel with the ground. Yeah. So we can have our crankshaft turning tool and just kind of rotate it over until the dot is facing straight down like this one is right this second. So that is awesome and we can move on. So now we can put our timing chain on. Now both timing chains are exactly the same side to side, but on one side of the timing chain, you'll notice that it's colored this blue color. See that? One there and one there and the rest are uh, gray. Sometimes they're copper, sometimes uh, gold or something, but they'll be different. And mine just happened to be blue. I'm assuming that's a Ford thing. And what we're going to do is between the two blue links, we're going to lay that down on our cam phaser. See how the arrow is between these two links. That's all you need to know for now. And now we can move on. So I've colored my little uh, dot here in black so you can see it really vividly on the camera. Now, on this side of the timing chain, we're just gonna kind of put our timing chain more or less where we want it to go. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to position it so our blue link on this side of the timing chain can actually go on the sprocket. And it might take a little bit of convincing to get it on there. And it has to go on the back set of teeth. It can't go on the front set. So just kind of wiggle it about. You might have to take out a uh, timing guide in order to get that just right. And then, so I'm off a tooth. So what I'm going to do is take it off and pull it my way until the blue mark is lined up with the ping mark and it's okay to rotate our cam phaser in order to accomplish that and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is not quite the final product of our timing set but it's half of it. So we have these two blue marks 
uh, straddling this line here. It's kind of behind this little peg here. And we have our other blue mark I just showed you lined up on our black dot. And I did move this just slightly. You can move it a little bit to make sure that all of the teeth line up. You want the blue marks to all match each other. The end product actually ends up looking like this, where this cam phaser is slightly off but it's lined up with this timing mark. That's how you know it's right. This is the final product, and it looks like we have half of it already done. So the next thing we can do is replace our tensioner. Now, tensioners are side specific, so we can see this one just right there. It might be a little tough to see. Yeah, there we go, L for left-hand side. So we can put that on our very clean surface and don't remove this just yet, leave that alone. So to put this tensioner in, we're gonna go ahead and put the plunger kind of in the guide already. And then we can kind of sneak our bolts in. It might take a little bit of muslin to get those into their home. And then I'm just going to bring these home. Not very tight. There we go. And then the torque specification is 18 foot pounds. We're gonna put our 10 millimeter socket in and notice how my torque wrench hasn't gone off. I'm gonna tighten these evenly. Oh, there we go. And it's 18 and that's 18. Very nice. Now, this part's kind of fun. You grab this and pull it out and it uh, <laughs> tensions the timing chain. There you go. Awesome. So now we can put on our passenger side cam phaser. And again, you just want this little peg to line up on that notch. Just gingerly put it on there now. There we go. Grab your banjo bolt that came with the phaser. And we are just going to slink that down. Nice. Now, when it comes to like rotating this, don't worry so much about its positioning because look, you can just change it. So don't worry too much about that. Now we can put on our special tool so we can tighten our banjo bolt down. So we can grab our special tool, again, linked down below in the description, and just bolt it to the front of our head here so our phaser doesn't move on us. Because if you try to bolt this down without this tool, the thing's just gonna go whoop and move, and there's no real good way to get a grip on it, so that's why this tool's made. No, you don't need the expensive one. This is just the cheapo one off Amazon. And this is a, uh, Six millimeter? Yeah, six millimeter T-handle. And I'm just snugging those down. Just wrist tight's fine. As long as this doesn't move, like see how nice that is? Now we can torque it down to spec. So I have my torque wrench set to 30 foot pounds, just like the other side. It's not different. And we're just going to tighten that up. There you go, 30 foot pounds. And then I set my angle to 90 degrees. So go ahead and pull it to 90, just like the other side. And there you go. This cam phaser has been successfully installed to the front of this camshaft. So both of them are nice and installed. This is really moving along nicely. So just like the other side, but since this is the R or right side from the driver's position, we're going to look for this R in that arrow. So it is pointing to this tooth and that signifies that it wants the two blue links to split it just like that. So once it's on like that, we can move on to the crankshaft side of the equation. So without moving the timing chain off of the cam phaser we were just dealing with, actually put your hand on it so it can't move. It's off screen, I understand. We are going to locate this blue link on the timing chain. There's only the singular link instead of the double. And that corresponds with that dot that I've marked in black on the crankshaft side. So we just line it up until that link is on that dot just like that that is absolutely perfect and just keep an eye on it to make sure the chain isn't ever going to jump a tooth and we're going to double check everything before we bolt everything down and get everything nice and tensioned so now we can move on so then we can put on our timing chain guide so we're going to do the top one first because it isn't supported by anything but bolts instead of a tensioner and it's a little easier to put on this way so it has two bolts that affix it to the engine there's a long one and a short one a short one goes on the bottom that's the long one <laughs> just like my out then we got our long one here and that goes on the top guy and then i'm just gonna slink these down by hand and then the torque specification just like the other side for this is 89 inch pounds so not very much at all and i'm just gonna go in equal parts as i can There you go. 
There you go. Perfect. And if you don't have a torque wrench for that or don't want to, a wrist tight is fine. They're just eight, to eight millimeter headed bolts, so don't go crazy. So now we can put our guide on and it just has this one hold. There's no bolt that um, holds it because the tensioner actually moves it like this in relation to oil pressure. So it just kind of goes on this peg right here and then you flip it up like this and let the chain ride on it. And then you want to just kind of hold it up like this while we put our tensioner on. So when you're putting your tensioner on, make sure that this surface is nice and clean. I've already cleaned it off with some carburetor spray and make sure that the install, the new install gasket is not disturbed or, you know, has a hole or anything in it. Mine looks perfect. So we're ready to install this. And the way you do that, just like the other side, except gravity is kind of working against you here, is you just kind of slot in the snout of the thing first and then carefully position it so the bolt holes will line up perfect. And then we can start threading in our bolts. Once you get them started, you can relax and then we can just slink these on down. And then the torque specification is 18 foot pounds for both of these guys, just like the other side, 10 millimeter socket. And I'm just gonna go as evenly as I can. You might notice that my torque wrench hasn't gone off yet. That's because I'm just trying to break up the uh, torque load so it walks down nice and flat. Oh. Double verify. 18. And 18, that's perfect. Now, now here's the fun part. You can just grab this tab and pull it straight towards you and you can see that the uh, tensioner has locked up into place. So here is what the timing set looks like when you're all done and we're gonna double verify everything. So let's go ahead and verify our driver's side. The two blue links are straddling the L arrow on this phaser. On our passenger side, our two blue links are straddling our R up arrow on our cam phaser. So both of those are correct. And then down here, we can verify that both of the singular blue links are on our little black dot here. And the Woodruff key is pointing up to the number one cylinder. We can, and we can verify that both of the single links for this side of, of the timing chain are correct. And I'm looking right at them. They are both right there, which is right on the money. Now, here is a little cheat sheet for you and what I use to put this together because, you know, it's a little confusing when you haven't done overhead cams ever. So here is kind of your cheat sheet. This right here is what it should look like. And look, the arrows are pointing exactly what we just verified. This right here is how it should look. If your timing set looks exactly like this, it can't be wrong. You are right on the money and it is really easy to get right when you know what you're doing. And now you do too. So that's how you put your timing set on and camshafts on your Ford 5.4 liter three valve engine. It is really coming down to it. It's looking more and more like an engine every single time we turn the camera on. I'm very excited to get it into my truck and get the thing started up so you can see how it sounds. I bet it's gonna sound really nice. I'm glad I was able to dedicate an entire video on how to do the timing set and the camshafts because it can be a little tricky and all the links are located down below in the descriptions into the amazing products I have used today. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this content interesting or helpful, please consider giving a like or even subscribing. It really helps my channel out. Thanks again for watching. Thank you Summit Racing for sponsoring this series and I'll see you next time.